Hash hash part one, the last normal day. Larry stood at his bedroom window, watching the Texas sunset paint the winter sky in shadows of amber and purple. Below, endless fields of cotton stretched toward the horizon, interrupted only by the massive construction site that had become the talk of Waxahachi. The superconducting super collider, a name that rolled off his tongue like science fiction, was supposed to be mankind's greatest scientific achievement. Instead, it became the night that reality itself was destroyed and rebuilt from scratch. He didn't know it then, but he was one of the last humans to witness an authentic sunset on the original Earth. The cotton fields below his window were the last remnants of a reality that would cease to exist in mere hours. Had he known, he might have memorized every detail, the exact shade of the clouds, the specific pattern of the fence posts cutting across the field, the precise sound of the wind through the December bed trees. The SSC project had transformed a small Texas town. Construction crews worked day and night, carving out the massive tunnel that would house the particle accelerator. Scientists from around the world filled local diners, speaking in dozens of languages about quantum mechanics and dark matter. Larry's father, Dr. James Mitchell, had become something of a local celebrity, the brilliant physicist who helped bring the project to their backwater town. That morning, Larry had noticed something odd about his father's behavior. Dr. Mitchell had been making phone calls from his study since dawn, speaking in hushed tones about anomalous readings and containment protocols. At breakfast, he hugged Larry longer than usual, staring at him with an intensity that made the boy uncomfortable. Remember this moment, he'd said cryptically. Remember what's real. December 24, 1988, started like any other Christmas Eve. Larry had spent the morning helping his mother stream popcorn balance, carefully threading each piece while she hummed, Silent Night of Key. The afternoon passed watching, a Christmas story, on VHS, laughing at parts he'd seen a dozen times before. His best friend Tommy had stopped by with a carefully wrapped present, a new D and D model they'd been eyeing at the hobby shop. In his room, Larry arranged his Star Wars figures on the shelf for the hundredth time, positioning Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader in their eternal battle. He didn't know it would be the last time he'd see these exact figures, with these exact paint jobs, in this exact configuration. The universe was about to perform the ultimate control alt delete and only a handful of people would even notice. At 9.47pm, the first signs appeared. The air crackled with an electricity that made his teeth ache. Static made the hair on his arms stand up, and his radio began picking up strange frequencies, fragments of conversations that seemed to be coming from everywhere and nowhere at once. Through his window, he saw an impossible aurora dancing above the Texas plains, ribbons of light spiraling toward the construction site like luminous tentacles reaching down from the stars. The initial shift felt like the world sliding sideways by a fraction of an inch. Reality hiccuped. His cowboy's pennant was now blue instead of navy. The crack in his ceiling traced a different path. His mother's voice downstairs had a slightly different timbre. But these were just the surface changes, the tiny visible ripples of a cosmic tsunami that was about to wash away everything they knew. The phone rang, three sharp bursts that seemed to echo longer than they should. His father's voice, usually calm and measured, carried an edge of panic Larry had never heard before. I have to go in. Emergency at the site. Larry heard the car start, then stop. Footsteps on the stairs, too quick, too urgent. His father stood in the doorway, still wearing his SSC project badge, his face ashen. Get your coats, son. You need to see this. You need to understand what's about to happen. As they drove through the darkened streets of Waxahachi, Barry noticed more changes. Street signs were slightly different colors. The Tongtons house was now white instead of yellow. And the stars, the stars were all wrong, like someone had slightly shifted their positions in the night sky. His father gripped the steering wheel so tight his knuckles were white, mumbling equations and fragments of scientific jargon under his breath. Dad, Larry's voice seemed to echo strangely in the car. What's happening? His father glanced at him, then back at the road. We're about to make history, son. Or maybe unmake it. The experiment. It's not just about particles anymore. We've opened something we can't close. 
Reality itself is becoming unstable. But they have a plan. They always had a plan. The facility blessed with floodlights when they arrived, but something was wrong with the light itself, it seemed to bend and weather, like heat webs of hot asphalt in summer. Men in dark suits hurried between buildings, their movements too precise, too coordinated. In his father's office, Larry watched as frantic scientists argued in hushed voices about timeline contamination and reality coherence. His father pulled him aside, eyes grave. What I am about to show you, you can never speak of this. Ever, the world isn't ready to know how fragile reality really is. Would you like me to continue with the next section? I can expand on the underground ritual scene, the replacement earth creation, and the aftermath of that night. Each section will be similarly detailed, exploring both the personal and cosmic implications of the events.